What's up guys? Welcome back to Sammy Morgan's Vlogs. We are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be reviewing restaurants of El Paso. Alright, I really hope that opening worked up that appetite of yours. Okay, we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna get right into it. But first, I'd like to invite my little friend right here, George. Okay, he's going to be helping me review some of these restaurants as well. But before you begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button, all right, to get future content for my channel. So I did a lot of these at the actual restaurant as well. Uh, so that's what this first video is gonna be about. So take it away, Sam. Next spot is Toro Burger, one of my personal favorites, one of the first restaurants I really went to here in El Paso, and I've kept coming back, honestly. And that's just because the food is amazing, all right? They have these avocado fries, which are great. And as you'll see here, I'm trying out different types of food. Their Toro Burger is really good. They also have some pretty exotic meats uh, for burgers. They have elk, they have boar. Um, there's one other I can't remember. All right, so this tequila right here is actually um, locally made here in El Paso. So make sure you go and check this out. All right, I'm gonna try it right now. So we'll see how it is, all right. Ooh, that's good. It is everything that tequila should be. And then got Jack right here in their own little Toro Burger uh, shot glasses. <laughs> Go down the stairs. I like Jack. And then, can I purchase this too? Yes, of course. I got, right. your, I got a Toro Burger right here. This is our signature burger, avocado, pepper jack cheese, lettuce, tomato. Okay, so this is their signature Toro Burger right here. All right, uh, it's got avocado, it's got cheese, works. And then these are their um, chili lime fries as well. These are actually all really good. I've tried them all myself. And then if you look on this, signature branding right there on the bun, which is honestly one of my favorite parts about this place. It just makes it so unique and so special. And they actually have two locations. This was started about 12 years ago, all right? Um, and this is their first one. And then there's another one off on Zaragoza. This one's off of Airway right here, or off of Montana, my bad. Not too far off of Airway. It's a good uh, burger joint. They have amazing fries, amazing food. Their sauces are also just unique. Like they have their own special sauces that they make. And now I've tried, since I'm 21 now, I've, I've tried some of their drinks. And I gotta say that tequila was phenomenal. It was really good. Um, I didn't try any of their mixed drinks, but being here, I've been to both locations and the service at both of them has been good. Good job guys, 10 out of 10 today. But overall, um, I can't tell, I can't say that. I'm kind of a critic. Um, I give you an eight out of 10 overall for both locations. It's great, it's phenomenal. Um, I'm just, I'm really picky about my, my tens, man. <laughs> All right, but you guys are great. Continue doing the good work. All right, so next up on the list for uh, places in El Paso to go eat, Great American Steakhouse. I kind of have a mixed review for this one. All right, because I've had good experiences here and bad experiences. Um, food overall, I'll say isn't horrible. All right, it's pretty good. They have this thing called a tomahawk and that's like their biggest steak here. All right, so if you're a steak guy and you love big steaks, this would be one place to go to. Uh, I believe that's like 75, 76 ounces or something like that. All right, so it's a, a pretty big steak. Um, not a horrible price for it. Pricing's not too bad. Although the food's not too bad, I've had experiences with poor service here, like one of the worst services I've ever had. Like Coralito was probably the worst place I've had customer service, and this is probably like second. Personally, not me, but it has happened to people I've seen. Um, they mix up their orders. Now, that can just always be the server, not necessarily on the staff, but it's kind of mixed, so I can only really give this a six out of 10. It would have been better if I had gotten um, good service every time I came. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. Okay, so next one I'm gonna do right here, George, talk about Coralito. All right, so Coralito is, it was probably the worst restaurant I went to in El Paso. I, I don't know if it was just because of COVID going on. I had a horrible experience there. It's actually right 
um, next to all host locos, which I will review after this one. They have two locations in El Paso that I know of. I went to the one off of Airway. I had horrible service there. It was just bad, George. Like, it was really bad. Also, the food wasn't good. They improperly cooked my friend Turner's meal. Or he got a burger and they, they didn't cook it right. They didn't make the right temp. And then some of the other side dishes they had weren't really good either. So Coralito is like a kind of like Great American Steakhouse as well. It has burgers and steaks, American food, but it also does have some Mexican food. I decided to try some Mexican food. It was not good. It was so bad. It, it tasted like I had just bought something from Walmart and threw it in the microwave. I just, it was horrible. I, I don't know what to say guys. I'm usually pretty generous about the service. I get it. I work in a restaurant, but there's no excuse for that and bad foods. And then also what kind of pissed me off was that they promoted that they had vegan food, but they don't. They actually, they don't. They stopped with the vegan food uh, since COVID, but they're still advertising for some reason. I don't know why you guys are doing that. You need to stop because that really, <laughs> that really brought me down. I only rate this a three out of uh, three out of ten. Welcome, this is Ojos Locos Sports Cantina. This is probably one of the better restaurants I've had, probably one of the best, honestly. Um, food is awesome, it's great. Service is also even better, honestly. Um, if you're a dude, you, you'll enjoy this, or lesbian, who knows, no. <laughs> um, I did have my 21st birthday here, though, and I can say that their drinks are great. I've had a lot of mixed drinks here, um, a lot of shots and whatnot. Uh, service is great. I would rate this probably a, I give it a 9 out of 10. <laughs> so George, what do you think about Ojos Locos? I really like the pretty girls, Sam. I do too. <laughs> um, with Ojos Locos, I'm going to talk about two other ones that are kind of like it. Alright, there's Twin Peaks and Cabo Joe's. Kind of the same concept. It is like a sports cantina, basically both of them. Twin Peaks uh, has more locations throughout the U.S. It's not, it's kind of a chain basically. It doesn't have as good as food or the views all right i'm just gonna say that out loud it's kind of like it's like better than hooters but not as like good as ojos locos or cabo joe's or cabo joe's was really good i went there they um they actually have like crab and stuff too and the crab was like amazing uh i didn't personally try it but my friend did and he said it was good and it looked really good too and then all the other food they had was good uh I tried a couple of drinks there too it was good and the service was great also make sure you check out cabo joe's too all right, George, what's next? We're going to Lance Buffet. Oh no, not another bad one. Take it away, Sam. <laughs> All right, where should I stay? We get closer? Let's go closer. <laughs> okay, this is Lynn's Buffet. All right, um, this is probably uh, one of the worst places I've been to in El Paso. Okay, this is one of those as well. I've been to a couple buffets here. This was by far the worst one. I have heard, although, pre-COVID, that this was actually pretty decent. I've only come here after COVID and it was bad, uh, honestly. So I think, you know, COVID's just changed a lot of restaurants. So a lot of the ones I say that are good are also after COVID as well, if I had gone to them before. And they're still doing well, doing good service and whatnot. This place, um, how much was it? Do you remember? It's like 14, 16 bucks, somewhere around there but it was not worth it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the food was not really that great. Um, they didn't have a whole lot of options. And then, oh my gosh, I gotta mention this. I had the weirdest and worst sushi of my life here. I don't know who, whose bright idea it was. I, I don't know if this is a thing, but they had a sushi roll that had cream cheese in it. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> it tasted disgusting. I thought it was like tofu, because that's pretty typical, you know, like they'll have a vegetarian one or avocado roll. No, this had cream cheese. The soups also weren't that great. Uh, buffets, obviously, you know, food's gonna be there for a long time, but it wasn't kept like heated too well, in my personal opinion. And then the desserts also, you know, I'm not much of a dessert guy, but the desserts they had were gross. They were, they were pretty bad. Like I, there was like flan there and that was bad. Um, there were a couple cookies, they were bad, they were dry. So overall this place, I, I give it like a four out of 10. All right, next stop is Rudy's. Uh, this location's actually right by Lynn's Buffet. So crappy place right there, great place right here. Um, <laughs> 
So I haven't personally been to Rudy's yet. Um, I'm just talking on behalf of Split and Turner right now. What I've heard though, it is really good. I do want to try it out. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to. There are some lo other locations. It's kind of like a Texas thing. It's also in Arizona, Oklahoma, and there's a couple other states that Rudy's is actually in, but it's pretty limited. It's like only in like five, five states. They have an amazing brisket. Um, they also let you taste test things, all right, like little samples. So those are great. Uh, from what people have told me, they've sampled the, the corn mix that they have, like cream of corn. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's like a cream of corn mix. It's their own home, uh, homemade style, and I heard that's really good. The pulled pork is good, the chicken's good, and the brisket is phenomenal. It's like really soft and tender. Pricing's not too bad. It's definitely not something you can eat every day. Like, imagine going to a steakhouse every day, you know? It'd be kind of the same thing. It's just so filling. Service is also great. Um, overall, from comments I've heard, probably give this like a nine out of 10. Okay, George, so I know Lynn's buffet wasn't really that great. But next, we're gonna talk about teppanyaki grown buffet. That's probably the best buffet I've been to in town. It's located off a gateway going, uh, I believe, south towards Zaragoza. It is really good. Great food. And then if you don't know what teppanyaki is, it's basically um, you pick out a bowl. So you grab, George, I have to let go of your head. All right. So, no, George, <laughs> sit up. Sit up straight. Get your posture. God, you're sitting on your hand, that's why. But basically how teppanyaki works is, all right, you grab a bowl and then you, there's options of like raw food there. Uh, so you have raw meat and then raw vegetables and stuff like that. You grab it, you put it in, and then mix it up, pile it up as high as you can. Whatever you can fit on that plate or bowl, that's what they'll grill for you, okay? And then this one that had three different sauces on it, I mixed two of them together in this teriyaki and one of the other ones. And you can watch them cook it right in front of you and then they can put other stuff on there like garlic and stuff like that. So if you're really into uh, like watching your food game cooked, okay, and like having that like really fresh, then that is definitely the route to go. But they also do have the buffet option as well. And their selection is enormous. They just have a whole lot of stuff. Veggies, desserts, all types of meals and food and vegan friendly uh, stuff as well. And then it is an American style with Chinese as well. So they have a whole section in the middle with like um, a bunch of Chinese style food and sushi bar as well, like a whole separate thing for sushi bar. And the sushi is amazing, I did try it. And then they have a whole row towards the back that's just lined with American style food as well. So if you're not into the whole like Asian food, Chinese food, they do have American food there as well for your buffet experience. Service was also amazing, okay? I've, I've gone here pre-COVID and post-COVID good each time, all right? It was just amazing each time. During COVID, they uh, have gloves out there that they make you wear, and then they got sanitizing, sanitation stations everywhere. And then our server, when I uh, the last time I went during COVID, was awesome. He was really cool and whatnot, and I did a whole thing where I, I made a, a shot of stacking the plates, as you'll probably see right here. And I was like, no, no, wait, don't take the plates away, because he was just like, kind of like standing there, like about to take. And I was like, I was trying to explain to him, like trying to make a video. And he's like, really, he was really kind about it. So he was, he was cool about it, even though he's probably getting annoyed. He's like, man, that's a lot of plates I gotta pile up. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, teppanyaki grill uh, and buffet, you need to go definitely check it out if you're into buffets and you like that kind of food. And it's actually for a really cheap price. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it wasn't very expensive at all. I think it was like uh, 10 bucks, 10 or 12 dollars, and then if you're a military or a senior, obviously you get a discount of like 2 dollars, so it's like 8 for seniors and stuff like that. So it's really good. The last one on today's episode, I believe, is going to be a really good restaurant as well track one so sam take it away so now this is track one all right this was a really awesome restaurant overall okay the only problem is long wait time right now uh, i don't know if that's due to covid it is kind of a smaller restaurant and it gets really busy apparently all the time because every time i pass by here there's a bunch of cars everywhere 
but they'll take down your name and your number and they'll call you so you can go off and do something else while you're waiting so that's not so bad um, service was awesome we got seated right away someone saw us and then the server came right away and ordered our food took care of us and all that good stuff food was even better oh my gosh that was amazing some of the best food I've had while here in El Paso right now I gotta say and it was fairly priced it wasn't too bad if you see I ordered that big thing of like super nachos and I got their track one quesadillas and I only paid like um, $17 for it so that was a uh, and it was a lot and I couldn't even eat all the nachos <laughs> How is it? Oh, God. Overall, I would rate this 9 out of 10. This is a really cool restaurant. And there's a lot of cool stuff too um, with the menus, how it's on the, on the table inside. And then they also have wet naps, so that's kind of cool props to them. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know George and I did. Right, George? That's right, too. All right, so make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button, smash that like. All right, get those bell notifications, all that good stuff, okay? And let's get more people to subscribe to me. All right, send this to your friends. Come on, guys. Let's get to 100, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Please. Please. If you don't subscribe, George here is going to get it, okay? You don't want that. George doesn't either, right? <laughs>